Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. With Paul and Silas, we came to Philippi in Macedonia, a Roman colony, And as we were going to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune-telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, These men are slaves of the Most High God who proclaim to you a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days. But Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the Spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, These men are disturbing our city. They are Jews and are advocating customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt or observe. The crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. 
After they had given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. And following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was an earthquake so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we're all here. The jailer called for lights, and rushing in, he fell trembling before Paul and Silas. And then he brought them outside and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, Believe on the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. And then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
the revelation to John. At the end of the visions, I, John, heard these words. See, I am coming soon. My reward is with me to repay according to everyone's work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they will have the right to the tree of life and may enter the city by the gates. It is I, Jesus, who sent my angel to you with this testimony for the church, testimony for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come, and let everyone who hears say, come, and let everyone who is thirsty come. Let anyone who wishes to take the water of life as a gift. The one who testifies to these things says, surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all the saints. Amen. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus prayed for his disciples, and then he said, I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me, and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one, as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am to see my glory, which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known 
so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Mom, Mom, remember, you are wearing your collar. My daughter loves to tell me these words when we are in the car, stuck in traffic, and I grow unusually agitated and loud. I admit, sometimes I do get frustrated when people get in the way, especially when I am driving and we are late. I would say that I am impatient. But Madeline, my daughter, says that when I'm stuck in traffic, it makes me annoyed. And someday, she says, it makes me very much annoyed. It turns out that being annoyed can become really unbecoming, especially for a mom and, I think, for a priest. This reading that we hear from Acts this morning is another example. For several days, a servant girl has been tagging along with Paul and his band of evangelists. This unnamed girl is possessed, not only by spirits, but also by other human beings. She is the property of other human beings, and as a result, her life is incredibly precarious at this point. When the girl encounters Paul, something shifts in her, though, and a new voice emerges from within her. Like Paul, she begins to proclaim the salvation of the living God. Now, most pastors would delight in this conversion, but not Paul. For whatever reason, Paul is not happy about her presence or her transformation. And instead, he grows weary and is vexed by her presence. Now, eventually, Paul does cure her. But I wonder if her healing was Paul's primary concern. Now, at one level, this story in Acts is a story about people being set free. After all, there are many people who gain their freedom. Paul and his companions are released from jail. The demon is released from this servant girl. And the jailer and his family all experience some kind of release. But considering Paul's full experience in Philippi, this incident with the girl leaves me with more questions than it answers. The 16th chapter of Acts records three very distinct healing encounters. The first is with Lydia, this maker of the famous purple cloth, and we all heard that story last week. The other two encounters happened this morning. Now, Paul makes time to get to know Lydia and this jailer. And when he does, there is hospitality that is extended. And Paul is invited into their homes. And then whole households are baptized. And that is good news. Paul does this hard work of relationship building with this wealthy woman and with the jailer who holds some power over Paul. But the story with this servant girl is different. Unlike the other two encounters, this girl is powerless, and she is the property of other wealthy people. Paul sets her free of this demon, but the text is frustratingly silent on whether she is set free from her human handlers. And I have to say that's a little troubling. But what's also troubling is this. Paul heals her because he's annoyed with her. Now, annoyed is a strong word. It is often associated with anger, and that is another challenging emotion to tackle. Now, if you think that the word annoyed is unusual in Scripture, you are right, because it shows up only two times in the entire canon of the New Testament, 
and both of those times are in Acts. The other time is when temple leadership grows frustrated with Peter and with John. They are proclaiming the gospel and the power of the resurrection. And it turns out it can be frustrating for insiders to hear that good news. Now, both times, this word describes events that are troubling, especially for people who are on the wrong side of Jesus. Unlike Lydia and this jailer, Paul doesn't really engage with this girl. He doesn't learn her story. Being present with her is not really Paul's concern. Instead, as one commentator very bluntly puts it, this servant girl becomes Paul's tool so that the healing power of God can be made known yet again through Paul. He does cure her, but he does so on the way to somewhere else. And while this girl may be cured, I do wonder if she actually is healed and restored to wholeness. And that's also troubling. In this busy and overscheduled world, I actually wonder if Paul's challenges also reflect our challenges some 2,000 years later. Joey Ager recently said that the essence of human liberation is dialogue. Joey is a community organizer with the Church Council of Greater Seattle. And several weeks ago, a group from St. Mark's met with Joey. We wanted to hear about his work with the unhoused population in King County. Joey said that true freedom, this kind that comes from God and that has divine, divine origins, ultimately, ultimately that freedom is about connection. For real dialogue to happen, the kind that transforms everybody in the conversation, there needs to be a connection. And those kinds of close encounters are not just incidents that are on the way to somewhere else. Instead, those divine connections form out of a deep and abiding sense and trust of the other. Those kinds of connections take time to develop, and they need to be nurtured all of the time. Only rarely does a fleeting drive-by incident develop into some kind of lasting connection. And I think that might be what Paul's challenge was with this servant girl. Jesus offers us another way. His prayer in today's gospel grows out of that same deep abiding connection that Joey shared with us. Jesus utters this prayer on the eve of his trial and on his death. It is the final time that he will pray with his disciples before his crucifixion and resurrection. This parting prayer of his is one of the most intimate dialogues in all of scripture. This intimacy began before the foundations of the world were laid. This closeness continued during Jesus' public ministry with his friends and with his disciples. And that connection continues now with everyone who follows in Jesus' stead. Jesus offers himself to God in this prayer, and he gives thanks for his own glorification. But Jesus is not the only one who is being prayed for at this point. Jesus also prays for all of us, all of us who are gathered in this space, and all of us who follow Jesus. What Jesus asks is that everyone throughout all time will share in that same life-giving, love-liberating connection with God. Every year, the gospel on this day, the seventh Sunday of Easter, comes from this high priestly prayer of Jesus. And I think it is fitting that this prayer rounds out our Easter lectionary. Liturgically and spiritually, we are in a liminal time. The church finds itself between ascension, which we, were, which we celebrated on Thursday, and again we will celebrate at Evensong this evening, and Pentecost, the gifting of the Holy Spirit to the church. Now, many of us also find ourselves in between as well, longing for this eternal now, and also frustrated about the not yet of God's kingdom. It's hard to be caught in traffic on the way to somewhere else and not there yet. But this prayer reminds us of something, 
divine encounters, those encounters that hold the possibility for transformation, they happen whether we think we have arrived or not. This divine connection with God is always there, including right now in this space and within you. We just need to slow down long enough to recognize it. And what's more, that ongoing divine encounter, that's the point of our existence. That is what it means to be one with God. And I think that's why this prayer is so important, not just as we end the Easter season, but every single day. At the intersection of now and not yet, make time this week to connect with another person. Invite someone who you don't know to share something about themselves with you, and then offer something about yourself in return. Ask curious questions about the passions of this person, and then listen without judgment as that person tells you about his or her motivations. Help them to name their hopes, and then wonder together about how their hopes and your hopes share commonalities and differences. And then when you are done, give thanks for each other and watch what happens next. You might discover that you are closer to God's kingdom than you ever imagined. Amen. Let us join with Christians throughout the world as we say together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten God. as we work and worship, O oh Jesus, and receive the prayers of your church on behalf of the whole creation, as we say, Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Fill the church with your spirit, and teach us to announce the good news of resurrection to all the world. Risen Lord, Visit those who exercise authority in our nation and in the world, and grant them a vision of your kingdom. Risen Lord, listen to those who cry out to you, O compassionate one, and restore their lives. Risen Lord, gracious one, Guide us in our daily work in this community and strengthen us to follow you faithfully and to serve the common good. Risen Lord, 
Look with compassion upon those for whom we pray, especially for Blake Thompson, Rob Reed, Nathan, Carrie Kaler, the Abbott family, Virgil Olive, and those we now name. Accept our gratitude for all of the blessings you shower upon us, especially our thanksgiving for those to be baptized at Pentecost. Eleanor O'Mayan Kelly, James Muro Quiot, Edward James Short, Maud Josephine Wardlaw Stegmeyer, Jackie Bowers, Sabina Henderson, Esme Heath McCormick, Esther Rowan Morse, Tyler Andrew Morse. And for the birth of Wren Evangeline May McPeak to Amanda and Chris McPeak. And those blessings we now name. Comfort those who mourn and receive into your heavenly glory those who have died, especially Larry Green and those we now name. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Well, good morning to you all once again. A delight to see you here and a word of welcome to those of you who may be visiting today. We want you to feel welcome in all aspects of this cathedral and to that end, if you would consider completing one of the visitor cards that's in the pew rack in front of you and drop it in the offertory plate here in a few moments. Following the service, there's a newcomer's coffee also, an opportunity to get to know more about this uh, community that worships here and the ways that we gather and go out into the world from here. Just look for a sign that someone will hold uh, after the service saying, Newcomer's Coffee. Uh, in the summer months, with this beautiful weather, we're going to actually move uh, the coffee time outside, uh, uh, flow out into the shady areas of the front lawn, and uh, come have some snacks and a cup of coffee or water following the service. This evening at 4.30 is the last choral even song of the program year. Uh, and I bid that to you, I commend it to you. Uh, a few other notes of highlight this Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. is the end of year concert for the choir school. All of our children will gather and youth will gather here and sing uh, in concerts uh, Wednesday evening at 7. Friday evening is the last film of the Mideast Focus film series uh, for this year and uh, it's described in your service leaflet. And then of course next Sunday the great festival of Pentecost will have baptisms at 9 and 11 o'clock service. Uh, at the 11 o'clock we'll have incense at this service and, uh, uh, and then following the service there are some afternoon activities off campus. Uh, the families will gather up at Green Lake and that's described in your leaflet and the 20s and 30s are going for a hike. Uh, it's also described in your leaflet. Uh, Friday afternoon at 4 o'clock uh, is the funeral service for uh, parishioner uh, Corey Kaler and so I commend that to you. Um, 
lastly, let me say that uh, there are, um, we are about a week away from placing the order for the cathedral chairs that will take the place of some of those uh, pews that were falling apart around the font. And uh, there's a information about that and the ways that we're inviting folks to remember loved ones as a part of that. So about a week away from placing the order for those, and they'll be here by Labor Day. Before we continue, I want to invite those who are graduating from Education for Ministry, EFM as it's uh, locally and internationally known, uh, to come forward. There's four people, I think, graduating. And I want to also invite those who are mentors and anyone who is currently participating in EFM or has ever participated in EFM to come forward and uh, wrap around uh, the front here. Don't be shy. Come on now. Education for Ministry is a remarkable program put forth by the seminary at the University of the South in Sewanee, Tennessee. I'm actually a graduate and alum of their college there, and it's a wonderful program for lay people to further their uh, knowledge and their spiritual journey uh, with focus on Old Testament, New Testament, uh, church history, and theology, along with doing theological reflection. So if I could have Don and Lil come to the center here. Don and Lil Snow and Trina Torgelson and Mary Siegel, who I think is away right now. These four are uh, graduating uh, from the four-year program. And Annie is graduating too. Well, congratulations. Thank you for uh, stepping forward. And all these others are either currently in education for ministry or have been uh, 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 students of that in the past. Um, Maria Caldwell, Penelope Jackson, and Tom Hayton over here are the mentors. And we have three different classes on campus. If you're interested in uh, learning more about that and perhaps signing on, it's a robust uh, curriculum. Uh, you can see one of them or talk to any of these people. But will you stand for a moment as we ask God's blessings upon these who are graduating from EFM? Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for these, your servants, who have reached milestones on their journeys. As they have gained much knowledge in the course of their learning, grant them wisdom, Lord, to use what they have learned for good. Give them inquiring and discerning hearts that they may continually discover the creative spirit of learning that comes from you, our Creator. Grant them faith and courage and purpose in their days so that their education, knowledge, skill, and all their gifts may find their true fulfillment as they seek to do your will. As a community that has watched them grow and flourish in, their, in our midst, we now bless them as they mark this happy occasion in life, and we celebrate with them, trusting that you have more wonderful things prepared for them than they could ever ask for or imagine. And we ask it all through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the people said, Amen. Amen. We recognize these folks for their hard work and their commitment. <laughs> Blessings to you all. Thank you all. Thank you. We turn now to the, you may be seated, we turn now to the liturgy of the table. Wherever you are on your journey of faith, you are welcome here. You are welcome at God's table. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light and accessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day and beholding the glory of your presence they offer you unceasing praise joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He lived as one of us yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption. 
recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup, we praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this cup and this bread may become one body, one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, matriarchs, prophets, apostles, martyrs, with Mark and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray.
the gifts of God for the people of God.
Pastor Craig will take this Holy Communion to Father Tim Nakayama. One body are we, for though many we share one bread and one cup. Go in peace bearing holy gifts for holy people. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. And the blessing, mercy, and grace of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Alleluia, 
Alleluia.